Hi, I'm Doug, and in this video series, I'm gonna show you how to model a pencil box in Fusion 360. Now, I'm not an expert, nor is this a sponsored video. I'm just a woodworker who finds Fusion 360 really compelling. I wanna show you how to get started with it and some of the features that I find so cool. To download Fusion, I put a link to their website where you can download a free trial. Now, if you check out the pricing, don't be scared. I've also included a link for their startup enthusiast license, which explains if you meet that criteria, how you can use Fusion for free. This is a four part series. And in this video, I'll show you how to model the sides, the top and the bottom of the box. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's get started. First thing we wanna do is save. That way Fusion will auto save as we go along. Let's do pencil box. Step one. So we'll create the base of our box and we'll have to choose a profile. So I'm gonna choose the rectangle tool here and we'll choose this XZ plane. Now, when you do have a rectangle tool or circle tool, you can choose between the different types. And in this case, I wanna center everything on the origin. So when I resize stuff later, it uh, resizes appropriately. So I'm gonna choose the center rectangle instead of the two point rectangle. And I'll click and I'm gonna to drag to make a box. Now. I'll click a second time. I'll come back and add the dimensions later. But in this case, I don't know if you noticed, but it was showing it to me in millimeters. So what I want to do is come in here, change the active units to inches, because that's how I prefer to work, and set that as the default. Now we want four walls joined by miters. So I need to offset the outer dimension by a quarter inch, so we have a quarter inch wall. Thankfully, there's just something called offset. We can choose here. I'll choose that and type 0.25 for a quarter inch and I'll hit OK. I want to join these with a miter. So if we're looking at this from the top, right now we just have a larger piece of an object with a hole cut in the middle. And what we really want is we wanna have, to be able to kind of see the four miters being joined. So I'll choose the line tool and just connect from the top to the inside corner here. Now, if I continue around, what I found through practicing this tutorial is that Fusion will start to add constraints. Now constraints are very powerful and they're actually these icons that you're seeing kind of around here. They're adding them for us. And in this case, we don't have to think about them too much. But instead, I don't want these four corners related to each other in any way. I just want them to join this point to this point. So in between each line, I'm hitting escape to exit the line tool. And then I can hit L or click the line tool to activate it again. That way it doesn't try to make anything in relationship to each other. So escape, line tool, escape, and line tool. All right, let's stop our sketch. And at this point, we want to turn our 2D sketch into a 3D object. So we're gonna use this press pull command, click on the object, and let's um, extrude this up, let's say an inch and a half. So that looks good. We're gonna choose new component and hit okay. Now our sketch disappeared, so we have to come bring that back. So I can expand here, turn our sketch back on, and press the um, modify press pull command again. Click here, I'll click on the top and that will put it to the same height. And Fusion will try to join these two objects together. We don't want that, we want separate objects. So we'll say new component. And again, Q, click, new component, Q, click, and new component. All right, we've now got four walls. Let's go ahead and name these before we get any further. So I'm clicking a second time on the component to name it, double clicking. So this will be left, this will be back, this will be right and this will be front. We're going to add our thumb grip in the next video to this side, so that's why I'm naming that one front. All right, let's do one more little bit of cleanup here in organization. We're gonna create a new component to hold all four of those components. We'll name this one box, uh, and make sure activate is not checked. Hit okay. Then I'll click on front, hold shift, click on left, just to select all four, and I'll just drag and drop those onto my box. Now you'll see I actually have all four of those components inside the box component, and I can turn that on or off. At this point, you may be wondering if it's a little haphazard. I haven't specified a width or a length for the box yet. I did specify how thick the walls were, but I did that on purpose. I wanna show you how you can go back at so many different stages in development with Fusion and make changes. You can change your mind, you can change a dimension, change a height. The few dimensions we have entered so far have been tracked by Fusion. If we go to modify, change parameters, we can see each of the four extrusions and if we open up our sketch, we can see the quarter inch offset. So let's go back and add dimensions to our original sketch. 
I'm not sure if you've noticed it, but as we've taken key actions like extruding or creating a component, Fusion has been adding icons to our timeline at the bottom of the screen. This timeline lets us revisit previous actions, edit them, or even remove them. The timeline also hints at how the actions that we take build on the previous actions we've taken and how they remain linked together. Let's see how this works. Let's double click on this to come back to original sketch and let's add some dimensions. Now, I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts, so I'm gonna teach you those. You can find these things under the menus, but just D as in dimension will let you then dimension any part of your sketch. So I'm going to click on this line, drag out and click again. And I want this to be eight and a half inches tall. So I will do that and then we'll come back up here to this top line, click, click again, and we want it to be two inches wide. So our entire sketch has updated, but you may be wondering what it's done to all of these other steps afterwards. If we hit stop sketch, you'll actually see that everything else has fallen in suit with the changes that we've made and they're now the dimensions that we were looking for. We can take this a step further. Now that's maybe as far as you need to go and you can come back and edit those key dimensions at any time. But one of the things is for instance, that dimension of inch and a half was used four times. So if I wanted to change the height of my box, I'd have to double click on each one of these change this to something else, maybe 1.75. And I'd have to go through and do that to all four of the sides that I just created. So to make this easier, you can come down to the same parameters we just had open and add your own. So let's add a few. Let's do box width is two inches, box length is eight and a half inches. Now that extrusion, let's make the depth. So box depth, we want that to be one and three quarter inches for all four of those sides. And then one more thickness, and that will just be a quarter inch. Okay, so we have this here, but what use is it? It's not until we come down here and swap out the hard-coded values with the names of the variables we've just created. So we know the quarter inch one is going to be our thickness. If you don't finish typing or clicking here, sometimes it'll give you an error. This is going to be our length. This is going to be our width. So, so far you may not be seeing it because I'm covering the model, but this is going to update now as we start to modify these values. So this was going to be our box depth. You'll see that that front just got taller. Box depth, depth, and depth. And this is one of the powerful features of Fusion is that we can create a box that later we can change anything we want. So like say I want this to be a five inch by five inch box. I can change that. All of our miters have updated and now we have a completely different dimensions to our box. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to two inches by eight and a half um, so we can continue to model the pencil box. Rabbits, grooves, dados, those are all things that you're gonna do quite a bit in modeling for woodworking. So let's go ahead and put the bottom in. We'll pretend that we're using a piece of plywood. So this will just be a rabbit. It won't be a groove. We'll just do a rabbit that we can glue in um, to the bottom here. So I'm gonna turn off our box and go back to our original sketch. Now I could create another sketch at this point, but we're gonna go back to our original sketch and zoom out a little bit here. And we're basically want to create another offset, something that's halfway between the quarter inch and the outer edge. So shortcuts are king, we'll hit O, activate our offset command. Then we're just gonna click once on each of the outside edges here. Now, this doesn't really matter because for whatever reason, Fusion won't accept a formula for the first time. So just go ahead and hit enter and then double click on the value that it put in here. And this is where we'll type thickness divided by two. And when we hit enter, you'll see it says FX now. And whenever you see FX, it means it's powered by a parameter or formula. So now if we were to come into our parameters and change maybe our thickness to something, and I'm doing this off screen, but if I change our thickness to, for instance, half inch, you'll see that this one changed to quarter and this one changed to half. And that's how we know that our parameters are working correctly. Hit stop sketch. And now let's make our base. So using press pull, we can choose as many faces as we want just by clicking. So we'll choose each of our faces here in the middle, and that will give us the um, outer dimensions of our base. So I want this to be extruded up the thickness. And if it's not in your list, just go ahead and type thickness and we'll choose new component. And we have a base now. Let's do here, call this bottom. If I were to, at this point, turn off these things and spin this around so we can see here. We actually just have overlapping geometry. We don't actually have a rabbit there. We just have a bottom and then we have the geometry. 
Let me take a quick moment to point out this cube in the upper right is a great way to be able to quickly navigate your model. You can also try clicking on any one of the named faces and it will take you to that view. And if at any time you get disoriented in the 3D space, you can just click the home button. So let's use that exact same command we just used to create a cut into the four sides. So I'm gonna choose these pieces here. That's the only ones that really overlap with our geometry. I'm gonna choose thickness again. So this is going to create a new object for us. That's not what we want though. We don't want a new object. So let's turn on the box. Notice the operation no longer says new body. By turning on the component, Fusion switched me to a cut operation. And that will make a cut. You can actually see it in red previewing where it's going to cut out of all four sides. And if there's any confusion, you could open this up and see that it's going to cut the front, back, left, and right. And we're just gonna cut it by our thickness according to our sketch. So now if I turn off our sketch and flip around to the bottom, we no longer have any overlapping geometry. And if I turn this off, you can see we actually have a rabbit the whole way around all four sides of the bottom. All right, let me go ahead and turn off the grid. Come back up here and let's do the same thing now for the groove. So once again, I'm gonna hide my existing geometry. I'm gonna select just these four pieces and we're gonna use this to cut the groove. Now we know we want it to be an eighth of an inch tall. So instead of typing an eighth of an inch, I actually just kind of want to continue our formulas. We'll do half of our thickness, which will be an eighth of an inch. We want it to be not a new component. We want this to cut so we can choose cut. Well, at this point, there's nothing to cut. So if we turn on the box, there's still nothing to cut. And it actually will tell us that there's no target bodies found to cut. And that's because we're down here and we want our groove to be up at the top. So you don't have to do it. This was a little confusing when I first got started, but you can actually just switch this from profile to offset and then tell it to be an inch and a half off the base. And that will cut our groove around the top. Now, what if we want to change the height of our box later? So let's, let's change this from a hard coded value to a formula. Let's say this is going to be the depth of our box, the box depth minus the thickness of our material. And at this point, it's going to cut it down exactly where we want it. And again, we can preview the four objects that will be cut and hit okay. If we look in here, we now have a groove along the inside of all four of the pieces there. All right, let's keep going. This is great. So I'm gonna show you a trick now. We, there's several ways to model this lid, but I'm gonna show you a trick that you can use a lot of the times when you get stuck and you need to make maybe a specific type of joinery or a specific piece fit with another one. So let's go ahead and just make a solid quarter inch lid instead of one with a rabbit. And then we'll add the rabbit using a combined tool. So just like we created the bottom, we're gonna choose all five of those profiles, choose thickness, choose new component. And the only thing we're gonna change here is offset. We're gonna use that same formula that we did before. So the box depth minus the thickness. All right, so if I hit OK, we'll go ahead and name this top. If we show our box, we have the same problem we had before. I'll hide my sketch. We don't need that anymore. We have overlapping geometry, but in this case, we're going to use it to our favor. We want to take anywhere that it's overlapping and remove the overlap from our lid. So to do this, we'll use modify combine. And I use this feature a lot to either add or remove pieces um, that I need to for my woodworking. So first, the target body, the one we want to modify, and that's the lid. So we'll click there. And then the tool bodies, the left side, the front, the right side, and then the back here. Now, if it may have join selected by default and you'll just look like you're getting a big cube, you wanna switch it to cut. Now cut will remove anywhere that there's overlap, it will remove these outer pieces that we've selected from the target. Make sure keep tools is selected or else when you click okay, you'll lose your sides. Doesn't look like there's any overlap. Let's see what we have. We still have our groove. And if I hide our box, we actually have a rabbit the whole way around our lid, which is exactly what we're looking for. And there you have it. Our mitered box with a lid and the bottom with all the correct joinery ready for part two. Well, that's it for part one. Let's quickly review what we looked at. We saw how to start our model as a 2D sketch and then use the push pull command to extrude that into a 3D component. We also saw that we could use that same sketch multiple times to create cuts or other components and even create that offset from the original sketch. Finally, the most powerful thing that we learned was to use parameters and formulas to control key aspects of our model. In the next video, we'll add splines to reinforce the miters, we'll model the thumb grip, and we'll even set it up so we can open and close the lid in Fusion. In the third and fourth videos, I'll cover photorealistic rendering and creating printable plans from your model. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell to be notified when I publish my next video. If you'd like to keep in touch in the meantime, follow me over on Instagram at dnhandcrafted. 
If you have any comments or questions, please let me know those in the comments below. When the next part in this series is ready, I'll have it linked up here. And in the meantime, you might want to check out one of my build videos. Thanks so much for watching.